Hello, I'm Dr. Brad Holmberg. I'm founder of Invisaligndoctors.com. I'm going to show you how to set up a deep bite case. And I'm going to use the desktop version of ClinCheck Pro rather than the web version. And the reason I'm doing it is because I went back to one of my old cases and I created a sample of this case. So I just called it deep bite case. It's a sample case. And now I can go ahead and, and, and practice doing the 3D controls on this. I can actually practice setting it up. Or I can show you how I would set up the case. Okay. So this is the case here. It's a deep bite case. There's a lot of posterior movements, or some anyway, that I think are unnecessary. Let's scroll this a little bit. Look at a blue dot right here. That blue dot is the TMA right here, the TMA, Tooth Movement Assessment Notification, that there's a complex movement with a second molar. Mm -hmm. So what I always do is, if I'm going to set up a deep bite case, I always set the arches first. And what I want to do is just kind of simplify movements in the arches. So here's the beginning stage, and here's the last stage. So when you uh, open up the sample case, it gives you the option right up here of creating modification. It's grayed out here because I've already done it. I've already clicked it. And when you click that, then the 3D control bar appears right here. Okay. So what I did in this particular case, I just simplified posterior movements. See the second molars aren't even moving. There's very little movements. Okay, so now I'm ready to work in the anterior. Okay. So I always start with the upper first, the upper teeth, and I check the levels of the upper teeth and I make sure that I that the incisal plane is set where I want. And in this particular case, we're not going to be able to see the photo of this patient, but this patient, to, to treat this deep bite, we want some upper intrusion, upper anterior, and we want some lower anterior intrusion. We kind of want to divide the intrusion between the upper and lower arch. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start on tooth number six and I just check the movement. So I can see that there's some programmed intrusion for eye. There's a little bit of crown angulation change. I do not like to see very much mesial or distal crown angulation change on cuspid or posterior teeth. Well, there won't be much in the posterior teeth because I cancel all those movements and I only added back the necessary ones. So what I'm always going to do here is I'm just going to take this and just click. I like that to be under two degrees. It's very insignificant in this particular case, but sometimes there's a lot of mesial distal angulation change that you want to correct. As far as as far as the level of that, I think that's about right. The lateral incisor should be up a little, up a, a stepped up a little bit from where the cusp tip of the central and, and the um, central incisors and cuspid levels. I'm going to add a little bit more. So I'm using this widget here. Now I can notice here there's a little bit of crown tip. So here's where I want to change the crown angulation to level the incisal edge a little bit better. That looks good. See that the level here is almost the same as the level incisor. So I'm going to intrude a little bit more. I'm just approximating the levels of each of these teeth. I always check down here. Now here's where it's nine degrees. That's a very difficult movement because you're basically taking that you're taking this tooth and you're repositioning the red apex and it's just not necessary so I'm going to click it down it's really not going to compromise the outcome to go back to the closer to the original position the mesial distal angulation position of that tooth okay then the next thing I do is I'm going to click on anterior upper only, and then I'm going to go for the grid tool. Here's the grid tool right here. I'm going to hold the shift key. I'm going to put the cusp tip of number six on the line. The lateral should be stepped up. The central should be on the line, or it's okay to go a little bit below it. In this case, you'll be creating a positive smile plane. Now, it looks like this has got a little crown tip too. So let's level that lateral incisor a little bit, and that looks right on. So the grid tool is used, and it makes it look weird because it kind of makes the arch look wider, but I'm going to turn it off now. Next thing I want to do is I just want to check the uh, buccal lingual inclination. I'm going to look from the side a little bit. 
So this particular case has some what we call retroclination or lingual inclination. And not only do we have to correct the deep bite, but we've got to correct this. So usually not all that torque is expressed, so I'm going to add some more torque. This is the widget for torque. I'm just going to add a little more. I don't want to go blue level torque, but I'm just going a little more. Notice up here that high occlusal contact notification shows up. So we'll figure that out in just a moment. Not all the torque is usually expressed. So I'm going to add more, but I don't really want to add blue level movements. You see that for root movement? So I'm going to back it off a little bit right there. If you go blue, it becomes a little bit more unpredictable. Let's look at the occlusal view now and make sure that everything's aligned. Okay, that looks the alignment looks good. So the upper is pretty much set. The next thing I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and look at the lower anterior. We'll do the same thing on the lower anterior. My goal is finally to have overtreat that deep bite. That means I only want about one millimeter of overbite at the last stage. Um, maybe even less than that. That's over-treating because not all the intrusion is expressed. And I also want to see some excess overjet. I actually want to create from cuspid to cuspid an anterior open bite because deep bite cases where there's retroclination or lingual inclination of the upper incisor teeth usually can result in premature anterior contacts at the end and a significant posterior open bite problem. So we need to create a little wiggle room, I'll call it, a little excess, because usually the overjet you see at the end is usually less than what you see in ClinCheck, especially in deep bite cases, especially when there's that retroclination of upper anterior teeth. So let's look at this. I told you that I always check this for for angulation change, and you might say, well, there's a little bit of distal crown tip. I just don't think it's significant. Um, and if you want to add a little bit back, maybe take it and reduce it in half, maybe four degrees, okay? But I don't want seven or eight, nine degrees on that. So if you show occlusal contacts now, teeth become transparent. So you can set the level, you can hit the control key, and you can actually intrude all of the incisor teeth like this. Remember, we're trying to over-treat it, so I want to go more lower. I've already set the upper incisal plane for aesthetics and everything. I'm just going to go a little more. Now we're getting to a lot of intrusion. So you can see tooth number 20 five is blue level so i'll just take it up a little more okay i'm going to hide occlusal contacts let's check things this way now so there has to be mesial or distal crown angulation change on the incisor teeth otherwise they're tipped but there's a lot of crown tip here we're going to need an attachment the root apex on number 26 needs to go distal. I'm going to put a beveled attachment, and I'm going to put it on the lingual surface. It's going to be beveled on the mesial, the opposite direction of the movement of that root apex. And I'm going to put it here. So now we can go to attachments right here. Here's the vertical beveled on the mesial attachment. We're going to left click and drag it to the lingual. And then I'm going to make it right click it, make it a four millimeter. You need that attachment to perform that change in that angulation. Okay. Now there's a chip here a little bit. So I'm probably going to go back to tooth and just elevate that to take a little bit of the intrusion away. So it's like about like this. Then you can take a disc in here and you can kind of smooth off these edges a little bit. Let's go on to the next one. There is some crown chip there that I don't like, so I'm going to upright that a little bit. It's going to be about right there. We've got the same situation. We've got some distal crown tip. That red apex has to move distal. So I'm going to do the same exact thing. I go back to attach. Bevels on the mesial is what I prefer. It's kind of near the incisal edge. So I'm going to left click and just move it. And that's already a four millimeter attachment. Then I just go back and forth.
particular thing, there's really no change in the angulation, but there's a lot of intrusion. So I'm going to add, this is horizontal bevel incisal. It's a good attach, but the bevels on the incisal, or in this case, on the incisal, it's good for intrusion. So I'm going to add it to the lingual of that. I'm adding these to the lingual because, number one, these with these power ridges, which are for torque, you wouldn't, you can't put any attachments on the facial surfaces. And also, there's going to be bite interferences if we don't add them to the lingual. And same thing here. I'm just going to add this same attachment here. Okay, so now we need to create bite relief. So the best place we're going to go to IPR. So here's IPR right here. It's on auto, it's set for auto adjust. If you click on this little plus sign, I'm going to add IPR. And the best way to get lingual retraction is to add that IPR distal to the to the cuspid teeth. You get the you get the most. Because you because that IPR is distalizing the cuspid teeth, and then all of the lower anterior incisor teeth will move, will well, move lingual. So there you go. There we have situation where we have quite a bit of bite relief. I want a little more on the cuspid. I want the, I don't want cuspid contacts. I go back to tooth. I'm just tweaking things. I'm going back and forth. I'm going to add a little more intrusion to the cuspid tooth. That's pretty good right there. But And I can even get a little more on the upper incisor teeth, let's see what would happen if I add a little crown tip. Now this is called crown tip, labial crown tip. And it's gonna um, re improve that lingual inclination, reduce it, but you're not positioning the ready pick. So if you add a little bit of labial crown tip, in addition to the torque, the torque repositions the ready picks, I can add more and I don't even get the blue dot showing like it was before, showing that there's a blue movement, a, a blue root movement. The other features I do is I really like the bite ramps in deep bite cases. So those are already added for me. They were from the beginning. I always want to see attachments on lateral incisors. They're there. Upper laterals. There's a lot of attachments here. These were because there were so many posterior movements. If you submit these changes or with the web version run live update, these attachments would likely be removed. In fact, I know they would be because we're really not moving and expanding like you were in the original. So I'm going to go back to attachments just to simplify things and I'm going to remove them. Right click and just remove them. And if for some reason they're absolutely needed, they would add those back after you, after they run the algorithms again when you submit the changes. Now these attachments here are optimized attachments for expansion, and we're expanding a little bit. There's two reasons why you want attachments on the premolar teeth in deep bite cases. The attachments serve as anchorage to help support that anterior intrusion. And also in this particular case, they're probably used for expansion, so they're dual purpose. All right, we're almost done. The other thing I like to do is, in deep bite cases, is to add, to create some slightly heavy posterior occlusal contacts on the first molars and the premolar teeth. So let's show occlusal contacts. The best way of doing it is to add just a little bit of extrusion. So we go back to tooth. You can see that there's zero vertical movement. So I'm just going two tenths. That's a very easy amount. And I'm going it, I'm splitting it, doing it on both of these teeth. I'm not adding four tenths on one, I'm just adding. Think of correcting a deep bite as like a teeter-totter effect. You have intrusion in the anterior and extrusion. It's like a teeter-totter, okay? You go down in the front, up in the back. One thing you cannot have is you cannot intrude all the teeth in the arch. There has to be that opposite force, force somewhere. So in this particular case, there's extrusion of the posterior and intrusion of the anteriors. You have to have that reciprocal force. 
you could not add extrusion of all the teeth in an arch and just because you're putting the aligners in expect that to occur. The other reason for this extrusion is it's common to see light posterior contacts or slightly open contacts occur just from wearing plastic. Oh, the patient may be clenching on the plastic, but wearing a plastic over teeth can induce a little bit of intrusion of posterior teeth. And if that happens, it's going to be counterproductive to opening a bite. So I add slightly, just slightly heavier posterior occlusal contacts in deep bite cases to support opening the anterior bite and to finish um, the last stage of the aligner with probably a good solid socked in occlusion. So now we're done. Oh, so. so this is how I would set up almost every deep bite case. Some cases there's a lot more crowding than this and you need more IPR. Um, in some cases, there's tooth size discrepancies and you're going to do restorations. So there's other elements to the cases that are usually, but this is pretty much just a crowding case. It's a class one case, deep bite case. It's a great case to treat a patient. And this is how I would set it up. I hope this video is helpful for you when you set up your deep bite cases. And go create sample cases of some of yours and practice the 3D controls using a sample and you'll get really good at it. That's it.